All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with G1 Climax 2015. We are on day 14, and on the New Japan World Player, we've got our uh, timestamp set at 1 hour, 24 minutes, and 10 seconds. Currently staring at the uh, kind of the side profile, maybe a little bit more to the back of the head of Carl Anderson and the side profile of Tomatonga with his face paint all off. And we will be hitting play in 3, 2, 1, go. So when, when I actually say go, you hit play to sync up. Three, two, one, go. And uh, Carl Anderson just kind of leaning into the turnbuckle there. And there the bell just rang. And now we've got Carl Anderson versus Michael Elgin. This should be quite the matchup here, folks. The first G1 Climax tournament bout of day 14. Man, it's crazy to think how far deep in we are to this tournament. Absolutely. I, I can't believe it either, man. And it looks like Toriano has been joining whoever else was on commentary. And look at this. Is that Anderson rolling out there? Yeah, Anderson on the outside. As to what exactly he's doing, what the purpose of what he's doing right now serves. I think he's just, you know, trying to make sure that he doesn't rush into anything. He kind of wants to dictate the pace. Trying to psych Elgin out a little bit, maybe. Maybe. Now we'll see here. Look at that standing reverse into the waist lot by Elgin, but nice elbow there by Carl Anderson. Off the ropes. Oh, and Elgin there, that power. We talked about the power advantage of Elgin. Carl Anderson already has to shake the arm out, get the blood flow back. Yeah, I mean, Anderson is a couple inches taller and a good, like, 20 to 30 pounds lighter than Elgin. Absolutely. Oh, look at that. Elgin right now seems to be in fur. Oh, that's... Oh, wait, no, no. And there it is. Yep, shoulder block. I was wondering what Elgin was doing there, but it yeah, looked it's all like about Anderson. Here. Anderson was trying to get a handshake there, like an improvised handshake to maybe distract Elgin or something. And Elgin acted like he was going for it, and then just spun the leg and kicked him in the gut. And now Elgin here, look at that winding up that arm. And now Carl Anderson moves nicely from, but he got caught. He wow! Got caught. Anderson wanted to do a leapfrog, and Elgin just caught him out of midair into a almost a world's strongest slim there, actually. Yeah. And now Elgin, look at that. Prepping oh, that arm. That man, Elgin's been so impressive currently at 4-2. and two. I believe both these men are at 4-2. and two. Yeah. And a nice clothesline there in the corner. And now could it be the delayed suplex early? It is. And, uh, yeah, we're looking at it. Man, Elgin just imposing his will right now, Ashton. Who are Elgin's two losses to? Ishii and who else? Elgin's two losses are, are Ishii... And who else did he lose to? I'm trying to think. Uh, Okada, I'm thinking. Yeah, because yeah. that was day 10. That's that right. was day 10. And there is the suplex. Elgin now going into the cover. Hooks the leg. Quite an One, impressive. And actually, two. you know what? He hasn't even faced Ishii yet. I'm stupid. Um, he he's His other loss other than Okada was to Kojima. Wait, are, are, are you sure? Because he's yeah. No, he, faces Ishii, he faces Ishii on day 18. Oh, wait, are you talking about Elgin now? Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, I'm like, I knew Carl Anderson faced Ishii. We both knew that. I just got a little confused there. My apologies. Uh, yeah, I was talking about Elgin. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, my apologies. I love oh, the gun stun on the, the ropes. And, oh, right into the ring post there. And now could it be the pump kick? Well, yeah. kind of. It was kind of like a sick kick. Yeah, like a single leg drop kick there. Yeah. I love Anderson, he's so good. But as I was saying, Elgin's two losses are to Kojima and Okada. So obviously he needs for Okada to not win again. Right. And actually, Wait. actually, John, whoever loses this match is eliminated from the tournament. Really? It would re they would require Okada to lose both of his following matches and to for them to win both of theirs. And even then, Okada, they would only be able to end with the, the same record and Okada would win because he's already beaten both of these guys. Absolutely. So, so whoever loses this match becomes mathematically eliminated. And uh, I don't know. I mean, Carl Anderson has has had an impressive run, but Elgin's really come into his own in this tournament. So it's Although, I mean, that's uh, under the assumption that Okada wins his match today, which I, I think is probably safe to assume. Absolutely, look at him just grinding that form in the face of Elgin. Now, this is what Carl... I've been doing a lot of talking about how Okada might not necessarily beat Takahashi, but I think it's a foregone conclusion at this point. I mean, if it happens, the guy is 6-1. and one. 
Yeah. You know, and that's that's a beautiful. Well, that's 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 yeah. what would ultimately cause whoever to lose whoever loses this match to become mathematically eliminated. So, whoever wins this match is still safe, but whoever loses this match is going to be cheering for Takahashi big time. Absolutely. Not only that, that kick there by Anderson hooks the leg in deep, Ew. and Elgin kicks out. Yeah. And this is what Carl Anderson, though, he's got a smart strategy. He's keeping Elgin grounded so that he can't really utilize that power game. Well, at least not as effectively as he could had he maintained a vertical base. Now look at the fish hook there right in the nose of Elgin. I love the second half of this tournament just because it's so fun to try and figure out all of the different possibilities of who wins and who loses uh, and that kind of stuff because really it's fun to try and figure out who's going to be eliminated and who still has the ability to win and how they could go about doing that. Absolutely. I mean, it is one of the biggest tournaments I've ever personally experienced. The I mean, it does biggest. Get... Not one of. It's the biggest tournament I've ever experienced. Yeah, the biggest. Without question. I, I mean, it, it's the G1 Climax, folks, and the stakes couldn't be any higher. I mean, and, and Is Ashton... Elgin hyping up the crowd like a baby face here? Is he going to go for a backpack stunner? No, he's, no, he's going to drive Anderson to the corner. Oh, but Anderson, oh, but Anderson right because... persists. But Elgin flips him over. Oh, nice uppercut. Yeah, absolutely. Rocked Elgin there, and then a pump oh. kick in the corner. Yeah. Right in the head, too. And here's the thing. Not only does it work over the neck of Elgin, but you think you're all those headshots, you create the potentiality for concussion, and that's never good. Oh, Sit up, powerbomb. Wow. The strength of Carl Anderson hooks the leg here. Two, and Elgin kicks Whoa. out. Oh, that was really close. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, now that, Anderson going to the top rope. What are you doing, Carl? That's definitely new for him. I wonder what he's thinking about here. What are you doing, uh, Carl? Could it be a cross body, maybe? Or, well, whatever it was didn't matter. Flying nothing. Flying nothing by Carl Anderson because he got kicked in the face. It looked like he was going to go for a double sledge, maybe. but Yeah. It didn't work out that way. That seems to be the go-to move for guys that don't go to the top rope often, like Carl Anderson. It's like, oh man, now that I'm up here, I gotta commit, I gotta commit, I gotta commit, I'll do an axe handle smash. <laughs> and now Elgin pointing the gun there at Anderson, maybe a mockery of the bull or maybe just saying, I've got you in my line of sight, discus oh. forearm there. And now sets Anderson up on the top rope, and he goes to the middle rope. Is he gonna go for a suplex here? Could be a superplex. Kind of an awkward position to do that in. Oh, look at Anderson, though, at the count of the shots to the gut. Moves oh. out of the way. Yeah. Oh, it is a Gary! Now Elgin goes to the top rope. Drop kick? Oh! Outbreaker! Yeah, right to the face. Driving those knees in the face, and now he's measuring Carl Anderson. Could it be the deadlift German? He is stalking him here. He's got the waist lock. Yeah, he's going for that deadlift German. Oh, and he's got Anderson in deep, and he actually it. hit it on the first try. Wow, one. Two. Oh, wow, man. There's some really close near falls in this match. Your research has definitely raised the stakes, Ash. And as you said, whoever loses is mathematically eliminated here. Only only if Okada wins. Only if Okada wins, which, as you've said, seems to be a foregone conclusion. But with Takahashi, you oh, never know. Oh, just lariats to both sides of Carl Anderson. One, yeah, I like, one to the I like, front, and then one to the back, and then one to the front, and then one to the back, and then one to the front again. And, yeah, it, it seems to me like Elgin has this in control. But a pump kick from Anderson. Oh, and a neck breaker. Carl Anderson's so good. Just so good. And I'll, I'll tell you, I like the alternating strikes from Elgin, but Carl Anderson had an answer, and he is just still softening up that head and neck for the gun stun, and now what's this going to be here? Could it be a fisherman net breaker of sorts? It is. Oh, Onto man. The knee. Onto the knee. Brutal. Hooks the leg. Leg almost shaking. Oh. oh, my God. I don't think I've ever seen a New Japan match with so many super close, like, almost actual pin near falls. Oh, and Carl Anderson just did the throat slit. This could be the beginning of the end here. I think he could wants be. the TKO. Yeah, yeah the he's going to go for the TKO first. No. Oh. He's thinking a power slam, so it's waist locked by Elgin. Tries to slide through, Corrins, and hung onto the ropes. Oh, what a forearm! What an elbow. Good God. Anderson responds, but nowhere near with the same amount of oomph. And oh, and that was... Head. I don't even know if I should call these forearms or elbows. I can't tell the difference. 
Elgin is just hitting Anderson with everything. Now they look like forearms to me. But the first uh, two from Elgin look like elbow strikes. Oh, man. Either way, though, Elgin in control. Discus, but he meets an uppercut. Man, Carl Anderson is so good, and he'll take Elgin to the limit. Off the ropes goes Anderson. But oh, the what hilarious. <laughs> I'll tell you what, both of these guys in battling for supremacy here. Carl Anderson, I, I think, seems more like an insider because of the Bullet Club than Elgin. Elgin coming here on a dream. He's always wanted to compete here. And I think to be mathematically eliminated uh, on the contingency that Okada doesn't win, you know, as we have to note. But, I mean, let's just say that we, we consider them mathematically eliminated. That would be a heartbreaker for unbreakable Michael Elgin. And could it be the deadlift Falcon Zero? The apron play. Oh, the, yeah, the apron Falcon Zero. Oh, he's got him up. Oh, he's up. He's now up. he's going to change form, and he does. I still, I marvel every time he does that. Carl Anderson in excruciating pain. Oh, because the leg, two. two. And Anderson kicks out. That is such an impressive feat of strength. A feat of athleticism, too, because it's not just the strength, the power of the man up, but it, it's transitioning the positioning. Well, it's not like you have to move midair. You can just jump off with more strength on your left leg than your right leg, and it kind of sets you out in that position. Absolutely. And now Elgin, though, calling for it, pointing to the corner. Could it be the buckle bomb here? He definitely wants it. It's just a matter of whether Anderson's going to let him get it, and it doesn't look like he will. Oh, look at that there. Anderson been in the That body drops. And now oh, but Elgin on his feet before Anderson even. And another forearm strike. And a second. And a third. He's really taking it to Anderson. Four forearm strikes. Oh, and look at this. Gallows on the top row or up on the apron. And look at this. Tomatonga. But no, Elgin hits him with a giant spin kick in Zagiri. And now Anderson, he sets him up for the TKO. Could it be the TKO? No, Elgin. No, Elgin. Slides. Elgin's oh, and Elgin. fighting really hard. Oh, like, Elgin has him up in a powerbomb Elgin. position. Oh, and he just throws him out to the entire Bullet Club. I don't know if I agree with that by Elgin. I probably would have gone for the buckle bomb. Jay my White even ended up in that. He even got hurt. Absolutely. Looks like Dave Finley might have gotten in there, too. But you know what? At the same time, maybe Elgin made a smarter long-term investment because he's neutralized the Bullet Club here, and he's still in control. And now he can go out there, get Anderson, and roll him back into the ring. He needs to be wary, though, because... I mean, Anderson, say what you will about him having been thrown into the Bullet Club members and taking them out. He might not have had as rough of a landing because they might have caught him. Absolutely. Sent on. He got oh! it. He got That's it. It's not a soft landing for anyone, though. One, One two. two. And Anderson kicks out. Anderson knows how important this match is. And now Elgin it's... wants that buckle bomb. Absolutely. Can he get it, it this like time? looks like he's going to get it. He, he does. Got the buckle bomb. But Anderson, Anderson with the sick kick. kick. Oh, the back fist of the future from Elgin. Shout out to Eddie Kingston. And, man, Carl Anderson just collapses, and Elgin is feeling it here. And this crowd showing their appreciation, which has got to be. Elgin, again, bump. going for that buckle bomb. Anderson looks like he might get out of it. The guy gets <laughs> oh, that's done. You've got to be kidding me. Go for the pin. One, out. two. That's it. Oh, my God. Anderson wins it. Carl Anderson is a counter and reversal god. Yeah, that power bomb transformed into a gun stun. Elgin and that, went to the well one too many times with that buckle bomb. Absolutely. He should have known after the two, first two times that Anderson countered it, that Al Anderson had it scouted and that you weren't going to be able to hit it. And that Absolutely. third time Anderson found it, he dug deep and he turned it into a gun stun. Unbelievable. No TKO in this match either. No, Carl Anderson knows that he was in a war tonight, but he stays in it. His record now five and two. So he will stay in this thing. Elgin now. Elgin is on the bubble. Elgin needs Okada to lose to Takahashi. How ironic is it that Michael Elgin, who just lost a match, potentially because of the Bullet Club, is now counting on them to keep his G1 chances alive absolutely and elgin tossing the ice pack in frustration i certainly can't blame him i mean here's the thing ashton whether you stay in it or not it's got to be the worst feeling in the world to have your destiny out of your hands and in the hands of somebody else 
And that is where Elgin finds himself. Carl Anderson, say what you will, whether he wins his block or not, he has been so impressive in this tournament. And that gun stun, I'm telling you, continues to prove to be one of the most dangerous finishing maneuvers in this tournament. Dare I say, in all of New Japan, quicker than a hiccup is that gun stun, and it can beat anybody at any given time. As we move on now to our next tournament bout, which, let's see here, I, I, I see Yuji Nagata. Who's Yuji Nagata uh, facing? Uh, I want to say maybe Kojima? Yes, Nagata yeah. Kojima. So Nagata Kojima upcoming. Very interesting case with both of these men. I mean, Yuji Nagata, definitely well known for his uh, submission wrestling, his technical prowess, but his ribs have been very problematic. Kojima has looked impressive, but his conditioning has been a determining factor for uh, quite a few pivotal matches of which he's come up on the losing end. So, you know, for these guys, very interesting place to be. Now, are either one of these men mathematically eliminated by your account, Ashton? Uh, how about both of them? Both of them are. So, again, we find ourselves in a matchup that is wrestling for wrestling's sake. Just a matter of that yeah, pride. Yeah, Nagata has one point, Kojima, or one win, Kojima has two. Um, and obviously with Okada having five already, it's impossible for either one of them to catch up to him. Absolutely. And there is Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata, who's got to really be kicking himself that he is mathematically eliminated. I mean, those ribs were the beginning of the end. And they have been the theme of Yuji Nagata's G1 Climax 2015 tournament experience. I guess if uh, if Kojima wins this, um, if, if Kojima wins this and the rest of his matches and Okada loses all of the rest of his matches, they would technically have the same record. But then Okada has already beaten Kojima, I believe. Absolutely. So it's, yeah, these guys are both eliminated. They're both out because of Okada, really. Okada's been so dominant in his block. I mean, again, five wins. One loss. Yeah, and that one loss coming to the Intercontinental Champion, Hiroki Goto. Who is facing Ishii tonight. In the main event. I know. Can Ishii stay in it? Can he move his record up to 5-2? and two? And I'll tell you, I mean, knowing that Carl Anderson has that record right now, I've got to tell you, man, the machine gun so impressive. But uh, here comes Kojima. And Kojima, again, he's been his own worst enemy in this tournament. I feel like he had both the likes of Okada and Goto beat. But his conditioning, not really able to capitalize on the covers. And, you know, that, that I think, is what has really led to his downfall. So I wonder what's going on. Yeah, I mean, even if you just look at the last match, Carl Anderson was getting beat up pretty well. He caught Michael Elgin one time, but the difference that was made there was that he caught Elgin in that gunstone and was able to immediately follow up with a pin. Absolutely. You know, you've got to have, I wouldn't even call it a sense of urgency, just the ability to be able to make the instantaneous covers after a certain chain of offense or an explosive offensive maneuver like we saw with the gun stun. And Kojima just does not have that ability. Yep. I'd, I'd say Yuji Nagata has it more than he does, if you want me to be honest. And the guy's got bruised ribs. Yeah. Nagata, I'm telling well, I mean, you know what Nagata's shirt says, right? Uh, Anti-aging. Exactly. And here we go here. You know what? Because of that, I'm going to pick Nagata to win this match because I think Kojima might have. I don't, I don't want to. I'm not trying to uh, attack any wrestlers, but it seems like just from the visual evidence that we've seen in this tournament so far, it seems like Kojima showed up at G1 out of shape. Absolutely. Brilliant. I can't leg. say that about anyone else. Absolutely. That was a nice leg pick by Nagata, but look at Kojima. They're trying to take control of the arm. Hands clasped by Nagata. I don't think you want to try and trade submissions with Blue Justice here. I mean, that's his forte. And now he's got the side headlock on Kojima. Now he's going to really ground him here. But look at the head scissor counter there by Kojima. If you'll notice, too, Kojima's two wins that he's gotten so far were both under 13 minutes. So the longer a match goes, the less likely he is to win. Excellent point, Ashton. Excellent point, indeed. And now look at Nagata there now. Nagata trying to go for the cross arm breaker here. But Kojima, much like Nagata earlier, has the hands clasped. And now he's got the foot on the rope there. Nagata has to make the break. I find it, it has very... to make the break, but it looks to me like he wants to dictate when. Absolutely. And, I mean, Ashton, I find it somewhat perplexing, personally, why Kojima would try and engage Nagata on his turf. Just makes no sense to me whatsoever. 
Uh, Kojima seems like he would maybe do better in, in a strike bout. I'm not really sure what Kojima does. Maybe you have some. Yeah, I mean, Kojima took it to Elgin in, in the first day, I think it was, or the second day, I guess, since this is B-Block. In the first day of B-Block matches, Kojima took it to Elgin and, and really kind of held his own in some of those stiff, uh, strong style exchanges. Absolutely. And he ended up beating Elgin. Now, he might get the better of this forearm exchange here. Nagata, though, not backing down. And you got to wonder if Kojima will go low and maybe do a kick to the ribs. And now Kojima there. Oh, well, no, that's that. He's got the, the back of the head clasp, and there he was able to hit a successive forearms. But Nagata, though, with the knee to the midsection. So, yeah, no quit. What quit, irony no... there that Nagata is actually targeting Kojima's midsection when Nagata is the one with the bad ribs. Absolutely. And now he just did a low drop kick to the to the knee there of Kojima. Went for the T-bone. Kojima fights out, and there's the strike to the ribs again. Yep. Kojima again. stands tall. Yep. Man, those ribs. If you're a Yuji Nagata fan, I mean, my heart goes out to I you. feel bad for Nagata. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel bad for Nagata because I feel like if he didn't have such bad rib problems, and it really all started with Takahashi, uh, if Takahashi hadn't given him this rib injury, I feel like he would have had a chance to win a lot more matches since then. I feel like he would have been far more dominant in this block. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with you. And now Kojima really working over that area. And that's why, I, you know, I feel like with some performers, maybe it's a battle of conscience. Thinking, you know, do I really have to go after the ribs of Nagata? And then when they see him in control, which is why he would have been so much more impressive if he didn't sustain this injury. They just say to themselves, no, I've got to take the advantage that I've been given. And they go after the ribs. Yeah. Kojima just doesn't really seem to care, though. Doesn't seem remorseful that he's just kicking Nagata. And that's the thing, Ashton. I, I mean, with any kind of injury, it could be rib, back, whatever. You only have so little time to recover. Maybe like a day, maybe two days to recover or what have you. Uh, but as soon as you get back in a match and as soon as you get kicked even once or punched even once, it seems like all that rehabbing, if you even want to call it that, just comes undone immediately. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think about, but before the rib injury, Yuji Nagata was 1-1. One one. He was 500 with the only loss that he had coming to Shinsuke Nakamura, which, again, there's kind of no shame in that. Um, but ever since that rib injury, he's lost every single match. Absolutely. And Kojima His only did. win of the entire tournament was his first match. Yeah. And that was against... Uh, was it? It was Hanma. His first match was against Hanma. So say what you will about beating Hanma. Uh, the fact that his only loss before the rib injury was to Nakamura, I think, also speaks volumes. So yeah, Nagata. I feel like if he hadn't been injured, he might be three and three net by now, rather than one and five. Absolutely. And now look, officials actually checking on those ribs. You may just have to call it here. I mean, yeah. how many times are we going to force this man to compete with bruised ribs? you got to think about the man's welfare. And it's especially in a match where there are no real advantages to be gained by either man. They're both mathematically eliminated. Either one winning wouldn't give them an advantage in G1. It would just be a pride issue. Absolutely. And, and, and that's been a central theme on day 14, I've noticed in our commentary, is pride. So many proud people that have been mathematically eliminated. Oh. Right guardrail goes Nagata and... Oh, my God, his discomfort is unbelievable. Trying to shove the official away. Kojima is in firm control right now. These guys are putting on a great match, though, because they're really making me get behind Nagata. Like, I really, not only did I pick him to win earlier because of the conditioning issue, but now I really want him to win, too. Well, they, they might have to call it here. I mean, like you said, there is nothing to be gained for either man. You've got to put his welfare, you know, I, I think b b before, uh, ahead of this match, I should say. And... I, I just I really worry for Yuji Nagata and the state of those ribs. He has not been able to get the proper healing time. He has not been able to properly rehab those ribs. And for what it's time... worth, after this match, he will have a three-day, uh, or I guess it would be two-day, Monday and Tuesday healing process, healing opportunity. And that may be true, Ashton, but it's like I said. You could have one day, you could have two days. Hell, I feel like with how bad the ribs are, you could even have a full week. But one kick to the gut, one body shot, especially when it's a continuous attack, especially, it all comes undone. Nagata well, and just... another thing is he's, he's going to have uh, Monday and Tuesday to heal, and then he has a match on Wednesday against Okada, which, I mean, he might as well just forfeit at this point. 
And then he's going to have Thursday and Friday to heal before on Saturday he's going to end up with another match against Goto. So not only is Nagata in a rough way physically, but he's in a rough way as far as the last two opponents are champions. Right. And now Nagata. He's trying he is to pumping himself, himself up, though. He's trying a nice measured kick there right to the chest of Kojima. And now again... Striking ability of Nagata is to not be understated. And again, this oh, time, and another one. Kojima is in the corner. He's, he's actually Kojima keeping himself looks like up. he might be winded. I don't know. You know, it is getting there. Like you said, the longer a match goes, the oh, more... Oh, look at that. Uh, Kojima doesn't have any kind of a response for Nagata right now. That big boot, and now he's going to go for the T-bone. Kojima fighting out of that, though. But no, again, Kojima's elbow strikes didn't have enough oomph behind them, and Nagata ended up getting off that T-bone. It's going to be a war of attrition. It's the bruised ribs versus the lack of conditioning. So which one is worse to have will be the question. And look at that. The top rope neck, neck breaker. breaker there. Wow. And Kojima stays in it. Kojima stays in it. And Nagata. I, if you're Nagata, though, Ash, I think you and I can both agree. I think you want to put this away very quickly now that you're in control. Definitely. I mean, you, you don't want to let those ribs linger. You don't want to give your opponent an opening. And now Kojima slides through, tries to go for the waist lock, standing switch there by Nagata. Kojima, though, reverses into the nice waist lock. And, uh, yeah, I should say front face lock into that DDT. Yes, just spiked him on the canvas. Kojima, I'll tell you, could be softening up the neck now for the Koji cutter and the Koji lariat. So Nagata may have rib issues and neck issues before this thing's all over. It's funny because so many guys in New Japan have neck-based offense for their finisher, and yet Carl Anderson does it best. Absolutely. And again, back to those ribs. You know what? I'll add Carl Anderson and Naito do it best. Oh, and look at that Koji Cutter. He hit it. All because of the ribs, Ashton. Nagata was too busy tending to those ribs, and because he was sucking and, in yeah, the air. He was bent breathe. over, he was hunched over, and he had his arms in a vulnerable position, and his head was just kind of sticking out there like it was on a platter for Kojima to use. And now Kojima takes off the elbow pad. He's calling for the Koji Lariat. Oh, but Nagata gets the boot up. And a nice Inzagiri there from Nagata. I don't know if he got all of it, but I think he got enough. And oh, look at that knee nice in the knee corner the there. Corner. Oh, what's it going to be here? Look at that Saito, Saito. suplex. Maybe. I don't know, look at that. Kojima fights out. Now the waist lock there by Nagata tries to roll through. Pulls Kojima off the ropes. But again, the elbows by Kojima. Man, Kojima's persistent there. He is not going to get caught. Again, tried for the lariat. Oh, shoot him, eh! Shoot him, eh, armbar here. He's got it. He's got it. Dead center, too. Will Kojima tap out? I don't know. Kojima, he's, he's getting out of it, it looks like. Oh, wait, oh, look no. at this. Nagata, he's going to sink it in even deeper. He's got it sunk in. Oh, Kojima's got oh. that elbow taped up. Oh, man, this could be bad. That, yeah, that's another great point, too. That is a taped-up elbow. The he eyes rolling the back. Into the back of his head. He wants this. He is not giving up. He is taking this match. Oh, and oh, into the... looks like a cross-arm breaker. Oh, but Ko Kojima oh, does Kojima find free. Wow. I'll, I'll be honest. I thought that was going to be the end of the match right there. I thought Kojima was going to tap. I did, too. Toriano seems amused, and now and Nagata. Now, and again, Nagata going after that arm. Oh, but the lariat! Koji hit the lariat! Go for the pin! Here we go! One! Two! two. Nagata kicks out! Nagata got out of it. I think it might be just because it was the left arm. Kojima's right-handed. He likes to use his right arm. Brain Buster! Oh, that could be it there. And he does go right into the cover. Again, One, that can just two. two. And Nagata kicks out again! Look at the heart on Nagata! Absolutely, the resiliency of Yuji Nagata. Definitely showing itself here tonight. Kojima raising Kojima the arm. For the lariat, yeah. Again, he likes to use that right arm instead. Oh, Nagata. here we go. Nagata checks it. Ducks another one. Spinning heel kick! Oh, now Saito suplex. Saito! Oh, the bridge. the bridge! The bridge! One, two, three! That's it! Nagata wins! Oh, wow! Kojima Yuji just Nagata. ran out of gas. Again. Yuji Nagata gets the win. That bridging Saito suplex does the damage. And Yuji Nagata has doled out some blue justice here tonight at day 14 of G1 Climax. His record now 2-5. and five. Wow. Oh.
both men now at two and five, John. Yeah, very interesting to think about. Kojima, man, he was given the advantage of bruised ribs of Yuji Nagata, which you can ask all of Nagata's preceding opponents how well that paid off for them, and Kojima wasn't able to follow up. I posed the question earlier. And it was you've a got war... a... I'm sorry, John, go ahead. I was going to say, it was a war of attrition, bruised ribs versus conditioning. Which one is worse to have? Apparently poor conditioning. So what were you going to say, Ashton? I was going to say, this felt like a last hurrah from Nagata, because his last two matches are against the IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champions. I think he might have resided in himself that, okay, I know that even though I can take those guys to the limit, I'm not beating either one of them. I need to get at least one more win under my belt so that I'm not the lowest tier guy after Hanma. Right. Now look at this here. And Hanma's the only guy that he's beaten other than Kojima now. Yeah, that's class there by Yuji Nagata. He helped coach him up, and he kind of hugged him. And I'll, and I'll tell you, some guy was relentlessly working over my ribs. I wouldn't feel like hugging him, but that just shows you the heart, the uh, the respect that Yuji Nagata has for his peers. Respect and honor, man. Absolutely. Japanese wrestling is all about. And Yuji Nagata, that that's the thing, folks. When you're a competitor like Yuji Nagata is, those ribs are probably sore as hell. But he'll be going to the back with a smile on his face knowing he got the victory here tonight. And he earned that victory. Well done, Nagata. Well done. That was a good match. I enjoyed that. I got sucked in. I thought it was a great back and forth. And I'll tell you, we roll on with the G1 Climax, our next tournament bout. Okada Takahashi. This is a big one. Not necessarily because Okada has a ton on the line here, but if Okada does win this match, Michael Elgin becomes mathematically eliminated from winning the B block. Absolutely. But let's let's talk about the even bigger story here in my and mind. I do want to add Yes. If Ishii loses to Goto in the main event tonight, Ishii and, and obviously then again I'm adding that Okada wins this match, Ishii would then also be mathematically eliminated because Ishii has also lost to Okada. That is crazy to think about. Yeah. So Ishii either needs to beat Ogoto tonight, in which case both of them would still be in it, or Okada needs to lose to Takahashi, which I mean, let's be realistic. That's not very likely. Now Takahashi does bring one of his girls to the party. He knows that Okada is distracted by shiny things. Certainly. And let's talk about Takahashi for a second, Ashton. You know, we, we've done all this talk, Elgin, Okada, and, and for good reason, to be sure. But let's talk about Takahashi. I mean, if he can beat the world champion, I, I mean, that is huge. It is I mean, huge. It is. You, and I yeah. Think it's it, as unlikely as it might be, the more unlikely that we say it is, the more of an upset it would be. Absolutely, and that's the thing. I mean, you've gone out of your way to say, as have I, that it seems like a foregone conclusion, you know, that Okada is going to beat Takaji. And, I mean, look at this right now. The guy is staring up his woman, his eye candy at ringside for the night. And, you know, you, you'd probably think if you were watching, oh, Takahashi isn't taking this seriously. But that's the deception, of Yujiro Takahashi. Look at him. He's rolling around the ring. He's carefree. He's a hedonist. He loves to party. You know, he's a pleasurable guy. But when the bell rings, there is a danger to Yujiro Takahashi that I still feel like after everything, we're not appreciating enough, and Okada may soon find out. I mean, I let's, know, let's put it into perspective. We were just talking about in the last match, whether he intended to or not, Yujiro Takahashi changed the entire outlook of the B block because of what he did to Yuji Nagata. Absolutely. Nagata's ribs have not been the same since his match with Takahashi. This is the first match that he's won since then. Absolutely. And, and, you and that was over a week ago. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, Yujiro Takahashi, when he beat Nagata... And he did it by having a game plan on those ribs. He showed us all something that I don't think we believe that the playboy of the Bullet Club even possessed. And here comes the Rainmaker. And here comes Okada. And you have to wonder how distracted is Okada going to be by Takahashi's eye candy that he's got out there with him. I don't know, Ashton. I, I mean, that is a legitimate question. But here's the thing. 
I've said it before. I've, I've said it a thousand times, actually, and this will make it a thousand and one. Okada has all the tools. In my mind, the most well-rounded performer on the New Japan roster today. Behind, that is Behind Nakamura. <laughs> behind Nakamura, yes. <laughs> uh, but he is the world champion. That is something that not even Nakamura can say right now. That's no offense true. to you or to him. No, that but is true. Just... I'm not going to try and take that away. I, I just wanted to emphasize that Nakamura is be- just amazing all around. At everything. Uh, yeah, and I, yeah, certainly. Certainly. Nakamura, most impressive athlete. But I look at Okada, and I've said I've stolen the JBL. Maybe that right there, what you just said, the athlete thing. Maybe Okada is a better athlete than Nakamura, but everything else I think Nakamura takes, even if only by an edge. I, and you know what? I will concede that ground to you. I will concede that ground. But here's the thing. Okada has got to be in the best mood because at the moment, this man is in complete control of his destiny. And again, thanks to Ted Guru 8 several uh, days ago in the G1 Climax Tournament for alerting us that, Maybe hey. Maybe even weeks ago at this point. We don't know. Days don't even exist anymore. I have no concept of time anymore, folks. Exactly. <laughs> but he alerted don't us. Don't tell hey, that to Kushida. Yeah, yeah. I love that reference, by the way, but he alerted us, hey, if Okada wins, he gets a huge prize because he gets to determine who he defends that world championship against. And, uh, I mean, to be in control of your fate to that degree, I mean, you want to talk about making it rain. Okada's been on a tear. And Okada, right now, just kind of taking everything in. It looks like he's not distracted at all by anything going on on the outside. And the the one thing that I will say, it seems to me like Takahashi only brought Cody Hall to ringside as far as Bullet Club representation goes. Well, they have such great communication. I think Ashton do Takahashi and Cody Hall. We've seen it in the past, and we may see it again here. And I'll get that already grabbing the hair of Okada, trying to make the break that way. I don't think Takahashi's going to tolerate Okada, you know, doing his intimidating tactics. You know, the whole patting on the chest and everything else. I'll tell you, this could be a great night, a wonderful night for Yujiro Takahashi. And, I mean, hell, Ashton, let's bring up the point that you keep bringing up when champions lose matches in the G1 Climax. You know, you have to figure that they have a list of contenders to answer to. Can you yeah, imagine? I mean, I would argue that right now, Okada owes Goto a World Heavyweight Championship match on this, in the same way that Goto owes both Nakamura and Carl Anderson matches. Absolutely. Makabe is kind of stacking up contenders as well. I, I think everybody is. And now look at this, the Tope Atomico early there. Yep. Yeah, by Okada. Okada knows what he's doing. Okada. Oh, look at that. He went for the two sweet with Cody Hall, and Cody Hall was going to oblige, but Okada pulled away. Psyched him out. Yeah, very weird that Cody Hall had the lines blurred even for a moment about who the allies are in this equation. And now look at that drop kick there. Oh, that. that low angle drop kick. I'll tell you, I've, I've said it before. I, I was saying earlier, I've stolen the JBL line as Takashi kicks out. He always says that if I were to build a wrestling company from the ground up, it would be in the image of Randy Orton. I've said the same thing, but I've said it about Okada, and then you've made the point that Okada is kind of like the Randy Orton of New Japan. Yeah. How good he is with his execution, you know, his look. He does like a rope hung and oftentimes a guardrail hung DDT. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Okada might be the most impressive athlete in the world of wrestling right now. Absolutely, and look at that. I mean, sure, like I mean, you could say, you know, your Matt Seidel, your ACH, your Jack Evans. There's a long list of high flyers that are amazing athletes. But what separates Okada is that he's got that athleticism on top of the fact that he's six three. Absolutely. And now look at look at Yujiro Takahashi's uh, lady friend for the evening giving Okada the thumbs down, pretty much saying that he's a meanie. I don't think Okada's going to mind that too much, but he'll mind that. His back hitting the guardrail hard there, and now Takahashi, oh fisherman uh, suplex almost on the outside. Fisherman Buster. Fisherman Buster on the outside. Wow. And now I'm getting the approval. Yeah, I got to, and, and that approval, I mean, that'll certainly boost your morale, I'll tell you that right now. Yujiro Takahashi, I don't think he'll settle for anything less than the absolute best kind of after party. Look at this, Ashton. Look at this Cody Hall, like we thought, paying dividends already. The clubby blow to the back of Okada, working over the area. And oh, and taking out Keto as well. That damn bullet club, but you had to expect it. You had to expect it with the disparity between Takahashi and Okada that he would close the gap through Cody Hall. 
Now, Takahashi pleading with the referee, please forgive me, please forgive me. I'm sorry, I didn't know any better. And that's what happens. Ghetto has been taken out. Okada has been taken out. And Takahashi, he's going to try and take the count-out victory here. Oh, wait, yeah. no, he's not. He's actually rolling back to the outside to do something. You know what? I actually think that's the smarter of the two strategies. I mean, historically, nobody's gotten a count-out victory yet in this tournament, so you might as well follow up the offensive. And now he goes in for the pin. Let's see what... No, what? What are you what doing, is, ref? What is Takahashi doing is, is the better question. Now look at that. Going for the mount punches here. Just driving them into Okada's face. I don't understand why the ref didn't get down to count that. Maybe the ref's still salty with Takahashi, there and now he counts it. Too, and yeah. That was really, really strange. Absolutely. Kind of put me off for just a second, so, uh, and then there again. From what I understand, her name is Yellow Barbie. Yellow Barbie, huh? Uh, yeah, I actually, yeah, I've done a little bit of research, and her Instagram name is Yellow Barbie, so. Hey, we'll go with it, man. And now Takahashi taking the offensive to the outside. And, you know, the question was, you know, how would Cody Hall play into this match? And I, I think he really cemented the momentum for Takahashi. And now Takahashi's just riding the train. And for his sake, he better hope that it doesn't go off the tracks. Because once Okada gets an opening, it's really hard to come back from that. So Takahashi better be taking this advantage that he has right now, in this present moment, very seriously. As you see now, the Snapmare takeover. And now he's just grounding Okada here. And Ashton, again, I mean, we, we talk about what a big victory it is for Takahashi if he could get the job done. But even though it is Takahashi, still big stakes for Okada. You want to keep the momentum you've got in the tournament. You want to go 6-1 and one so you can maintain the control you have over your destiny. If he were to fall here, if he were to lose and go 5-2, and two, you would pretty much be in the same league as Carl Anderson. Which, I mean, still, if they were to tie in the block, Okada would get the win, sure. But I think you want to have the most dominant record possible so it doesn't come to that. Yeah. You know, I, I'd rather be an excellent sharpshooter, if you will, than, than leave my guy to be, you know, a worse shot than I am, so to speak. You know, it's all about skill, not about necessarily luck, if you can help it. And now Okada just gets a uh, clothesline in the corner there by Takahashi. I thought he might have had a counter. He did not. And now Takahashi, what's it going to be here? Oh, went for the boot. Okada caught it. And now a boot oh, of his own. Oh, boot of Okada's own, yeah. Kick to the midsection. There could it be. Look at Hangman's that. Hangman's neckbreaker. Hangman's neckbreaker. Maybe a shout-out to the boss, Sasha Banks. Both of them all about that money. And now the Rainmaker here. Stirring. Trying to regain his bearings. Ghetto is back up, and he's really rallying Okada on here. And now he's going to charge in the corner. Oh, no, he does not forearm. I thought Takashi took refuge in the corner. He did not. There's the back elbow. Ducks the clothesline. DDT. And there's the kip up. And Okada is cooking on all cylinders here. He absolutely is. The he's the he, you know, he's the IWD GP World Heavyweight Champion for a reason. Absolutely. And he shows you that reason every time he steps in between those ropes. And now look at that reverse the Irish whip does Takashi. Tries to charge. Okada got out of the way. Now he's gonna elevate Takashi here. And this is the drop kick. There is the drop kick of Takahashi, the look on his face. He doesn't even know where he is. Yeah, Takahashi has a look on his face like he just realized for the first time in this match that he's in the ring with the champ. Absolutely. I mean, that rolling around the ring that he was doing at the start, the, the eye gazing that he was doing to Yellow Barbie, that's all gone out the window. He realizes it is crunch time for Yujiro Takahashi. And now the Irish whip into the guardrail. God, that's going to be hell on the back. And then the boot! He's taking him to the outside, and could it be now a guardrail-hung DDT soon to follow, Ashton? Seems He's like it would make sense. That seems to be the uh, the pretty typical sequence here, but I don't know. Oh, yes. look at that. Overcoats Cody Hall as well. Oh, man, Takahashi, I think kind of checking on him there. He's like, what is happening right now? I don't understand anything. And now, oh, man, I think Okada's going to vault himself. He's prepping himself. He's got the running start. And there's the cross body taken wow. both. Oh, man. And that is the respect. If you see the New Japan faithful behind Okada applauding, showing their appreciation for the effort of the Rainmaker. And Yellow Barbie's got to be feeling very concerned. We saw her a few moments ago just 
looking at Takahashi in pain. And now what's Okada going to do here? Not going to go for a guardrail hung DDT. Instead, going to get Takahashi back in the ring. Don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but hell, Okada's in control, so what do I know? And now he's going to pick Takahashi up here. Shoot him off the ropes. What's he going to do here? Flapjack! Yeah, wow. Such high impact on that, too. Absolutely. And now, look at this. Could it be the red ink by Okada? And, and it is. He's almost got it hooked in. Takahashi showing some resistance. I, th I think Okada's got to get the hands clasped. He does. He, he does. Red ink. That cross-legged cross face move there i mean looks like it looks like takahashi has a leg free but for the most part this still looks incredibly painful oh and he's biting the thumb that was a great counter by takahashi say what you will about the the primal nature of it it gets the job done and there's the back elbow though with the free arm by okada and there's the boot big by big. takahashi takahashi loves using those big boots he might not be a big guy but he knows how to put a big boot to good use yeah, I don't know how Takahashi, a man of his stature and everything, learned how to really get the power in those legs, but he did, and it's really paid dividends for him yeah, in absolutely. these matchups. And now Okada's stirring, but Takahashi pretty much in control. So f well, not so far, but for the most part, right now. I mean, those two offensive maneuvers, and and you can see what an image there, because you saw Ghetto really rallying, all excitable for Okada and Yellow Barbie, though still looking concerned, despite the fact that Takahashi got the offense. And now Okada's going to charge. He got caught and hung there against the ropes. And now what's Takahashi going to do here? Takahashi, nice slam there. An angle slam, if you will, by Takahashi. Hooks the leg, two, and Okada stays in it. And this has been the talking point, Ashton, in my mind, of Takahashi's matches. Always taking the seemingly superior athlete to the limit. Okay, having done a little bit more research and going into Reddit and stuff, uh, apparently we should not refer to her as Yellow Barbie. We should refer to her as Mao. Mao. M-A-O. M-A-O. Uh, fair enough for me. Apologies, everybody. Retract all the Yellow Barbie statements. Her name is Mao. And still, though, looking very concerned. I don't even know if that's her name or just like a stage name. I have no clue. I, I still prefer that to Yellow Barbie, though. It's nice to give people like a formal name. And there's yeah. the clothesline, though, by Takahashi. That was that was full on Larry, brother. Yeah, absolutely. I took his head clean. Going off. for a power bomb, buckle bomb, maybe. But oh, wow! Wow! That was a that that buckle bomb was way more brutal than anything Michael Elgin's ever. Oh, done. Wait a minute, Ashton. Wait a minute here. Wait a minute. No way. Miami Shine. Miami Shine. Hit it. No way! No way! Two! Th so close. Oh my god, you don't get any closer than that. And Mao, I, I mean, she looks, I think, a bit perplexed. That was Takahashi's best shot. Oh my god. LOL Okada wins. Man, you know, it's not often, and here's another point, too, I want to make, Ashton. It's not often at G1 Climax you see a man kick out of another man's finisher. I mean, normally you know that's the end of the matchup there. And, oh, man, the heavy rain by Okada. Oh, man, and Takahashi, the back of his head. I mean, Takahashi's not out of this thing. But think about the psychological edge, Ashton, that Okada just gained by kicking out of Takahashi's best shot, the Miami yeah. Shine. Yeah. I mean, Ashton, if you were in that ring and you had a finisher that you knew got the job done before and a man actually kicked out of it, I mean, what do you do? I mean, I'm left utterly flabbergasted if I'm Takahashi. I guess you just have to go for it again. I mean, I guess maybe if he wanted to, he could try to use a different finisher. Maybe go for uh, his sit-out inverted front power slam that he calls Tokyo Pimps. Oh, wait a minute here. Takahashi just... I know, Cody Hall... Takahashi shoving the referee into Okada. That has set off this chain of events. Now Cody Hall put in the boots to Okada if Takahashi pulls this win off. I mean, you'll definitely have to give the assist to Cody Hall, but still, it will say in the record books that Yujiro Takahashi beat Okada. And Cody Hall also took out Ghetto. Yeah, this is bad. This is bad for the Rainmaker. There's another boot there to the head. Oh, man, this could be inevitable here. And there's the discus lariat by Cody Hall. Takahashi here. He's got to get the referee back in the ring. And is giving Okada some time to recover, though. That should be noted. Now hooks the leg here. One, two, and Okada stays in it. Wow, Okada, Okada is kicking out of everything. I think it's going to take a second Miami Shine to beat Okada. But then again, who knows? 
the heart of the champion knows no depth. It knows no limit. And now look at this. The full Nelson by Cody Hall. Takahashi. Takahashi wants something here. Maybe it... Oh, Ghetto! Oh, look at that Ghetto, though. Evening the odds for his friend Okada. Oh, man. And now I think each guy has one bullet in the chamber left. Who is going to hit their target first? And Okada feeling it. Oh, look at that. Takahashi checked the boot. But there's the drop kick. There is the drop kick. Could it be I the tombstone he's going here? For, oh, he's going for a tombstone. And he got and he it. Gets there. it, no problem. Uh, he wants the rainmaker. And here, this is the end. This is the That's end. It. Rainmaker. And no problem whatsoever. And the referee's back to it. One, two, and it's over. Three count. Okada fought hard for six and one, and he has attained it. And Michael Elgin is now eliminated from G1. Absolutely. Obviously, he still has two matches left, but there's no possible way for him to win his block. I got to tell you, folks, when Takahashi hit Miami Shine, I really thought, I really thought we were getting ready for that upset. And you see Mal checking on her man for the night. I just cannot believe that Takahashi has lost this match. But, I mean, they don't come any tougher than Kazuchika Okada. Okada with the win, and now he's 6-1. and one. And not only does he have the best record in his block, he has the best record in all of this tournament. Absolutely, Ashton. I completely agree. 6-1. and one. What an impressive record for the Rainmaker. A total of seven matches, and in seven matches has only lost once. Has two matches to go before he has complete supremacy of his block, as if he doesn't even have it right now. Yeah, and then he only has two matches left after this, Nagata and Nakamura. And those are going to be tough challenges. Maybe Nagata not so much, but Nakamura, you know he's going to take Okada the limit. Yeah, he is. And Nakamura-Okada is the match that I've been telling you I've been looking so forward to. That happens on the last day. Absolutely, and here's the thing. I mean, Nakamura in his own right, a three-time IWGP heavyweight champion. And you know he wants to get to the mountain again for a fourth time. And if he could beat Okada, I mean, it would certainly send a message. It would certainly have a psychological edge there. I yeah. still can't believe Okada 6-1. and one. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's, like I said, he's got the best record. Certainly. And now look at Ghetto here, going to join. He's the only man left right now that could potentially match their record from last year. Uh, yeah. At the top, Matt, if... if match the best record from last year which he also had right because last year the best record was eight and two uh he could he could he's the only person left that could do better than that certainly because even anyone else that's got two losses they can't get more than seven wins exactly okada could potentially go eight and one i don't think he will i don't think he will but he could and now semi-main event time hanma nakamura we know who's going to win, but that doesn't make that's not going to stop us from getting super invested in this match. Certainly. I mean, hell. I mean, I, I really thought that Takahashi was going to beat Okada after that Miami shine. Uh, Okada showing us all what he's all about. I mean, I, I never like to count any man out until his shoulders are on the mat for three seconds. But, I mean, when you're talking about Hanma versus Shinsuke Nakamura, it does seem like, to use your term when you were talking about Takahashi Okada, a foregone conclusion that the king of strong style will reign supreme tonight. Absolutely. And I think it's funny because every single time Hanma steps between those ropes, we know. We know. And it's it's not where, oh, we can see the future and we know that this is happening for a fact. But internally, we know that he's not going to win. And every single time he decides to draw us in and get us to believe. And Absolutely. I don't know of anyone else that can do that. I think on that level, I would even go as far as to say that I think Hanma is the only person on the planet right now who is spoiler proof. Because even if he has like a big, amazing, like a championship match that you can't watch live, that you, you get spoiled by on Reddit maybe, it doesn't matter because the match is going to be just as amazing. Absolutely. Now Shinsuke Nakamura, we know he does have that injured elbow. So far, hasn't really affected him too much. He's still been able to rack up wins and be dominant. 
And again, the golden advantage of Shinsuke Nakamura does remain intact, and that's that limb advantage that you've talked extensively about, and as have I. And now here comes Tomoaki Hanma, the man who I think tries so hard and yet gets so little for his efforts. That's how I would describe Hanma. Has yet to win a match in this tournament, despite giving his all. After and two years. About two years. 0-10 last year, 0-6 this year so far. Absolutely. He is 0-16 in his G1 Climax career. And he could end it at 0-19 on this current trajectory. Yes, he could. But, man, what a break it would be. What a violent disruption it would be to that trajectory if Hanma could do the unthinkable and beat. I mean, I've gone over the rap sheet. Four-time Intercontinental Champion. Three-time World Champion. 2011 G1 Climax winner. Hanma's not in the ring with a slouch. He is in there with one of New Japan's very best, and I would argue one of the very best in the wrestling world right now. And I would argue the best in the wrestling world right now. And, you know, these two guys are going to lock up here. And Hanma, I mean, you got to wonder if that kind of stokes a fire inside Hanma, knowing who he's in the ring with, just thinking, man, I could win this. I could really make my mark. I could put my stamp on it, even if it is one in six. And you know what, John? Hanma, another guy who uh, I know we were talking about this when Nakamura faced Ishii, He's a stockier guy. He's a little bit on the shorter side. I think he's only like 5'10", 5'11". I think he's 240 pounds or something, but he's got very short limbs. So anytime he and Nakamura decide to get into a, an exchanging of strikes, Nakamura has a massive advantage over him. Absolutely. I don't care how strong you are. If somebody else can reach you and you can't reach them, you're not going to win. Absolutely. And, and there you see the check. And I think Nakamura going to make the clean break. But th there's Nakamura, though, with the mind games. And now, the, what, what's <laughs> Wipe something there on the referee's uh, attire there. Yeah, and, yeah, Hanma's self-tanner. Wow. <laughs> you could even see Nakamura's face. He was grossed out by the idea of even putting his head on that. Right. <laughs> and you can even see, if you look at, if you look at uh, Hanma's stomach it almost looks like he has a, l a lighter spot on it now <laughs> absolutely and now Hanma there with the shoulder block gonna vault over Nakamura Nakamura though maybe trying for the hip toss but oh, oh no, what a there efforts. see now the close range stuff that Hanma just took advantage of he could get an advantage with absolutely and now he's gonna pick up Nakamura very caught well no I thought he was gonna pick him up cautiously by his head he's just gonna leave him there Nakamura may be out here. He hasn't responded since that lariat. And now now Hanma's going to come into really picking Nakamura up. There's the chop. Wow, Nakamura seems a little out of sorts right now. There's another knife edge chop there by Hanma. Hanma's chops look devastating. I mean, he, he puts a lot of impact behind him. And now Irish up in the opposite corner. Nakamura, though, with that knee. And now look already. And already. sets him up in the knees to the gut. Wow. And there he it is. It. Wow. Sends really, Hanma to the outside, even. Yeah, it seems really early for Hanma to get the, affected by that move, or I should say for Nakamura to get that move off. But he did. And now Nakamura, I think, shaking the cobwebs out from that lariat. But he's back in this thing, folks. Starting to question if he ever really left it with that kind of dominance. And now what's he going to do here? Oh, he's going to hang Hanma up on the guard. Oh, into the crowd! Wow. And Hanma's head in between those, like, bars in the guardrail. I mean, I, I know Hanma's a man of the people, but I think Shinsuke Nakamura just took that a bit too literally. And now, oh, God. Oh, and there's the knee. the knee again. Yeah. Oh, man, and Hanma really being worked over here. And look at Shinsuke Nakamura. Man, his confidence is something else. But I, I think still... He's kind still working on getting his jaw back into alignment after that huge lariat from Hanma earlier. That just shows you the scary power of Hanma, though. We always comment on it with the deadlifts, you know, the suplex that Hanma does. But you but know this... that plays into his strikes, too. Absolutely. And you certainly saw that here, folks, after that short arm uh, lariat. And now, look at this here. Kick to the gut there by Nakamura. And then a kick to the head of Hanma there. And now Nakamura... 
has Han. I wouldn't say has Han necessarily grounded, but he certainly has him in a defensive position. Oh, and Nakamura almost mocking Hanma. No respect. Can't almost, really say. Almost saying, look, Naka, look, Hanma, I get that these people like you, but let's face it, you're not in my league. Absolutely. And all the kicks there just takes Hanma down. And Nakamura, man, no horsing around for the king of strong style. It doesn't get paid by the hour. He will put a hurting on you and not think twice. And there's the rear chin lock there. And it's got to be. And more Nakamura looks so serene too. Like he's got this rear chin lock locked in. He's putting another man into just through immense pain right now, and he looks like he could honestly just like be sitting in his bedroom listening to music. Absolutely. And here's the thing, Ashton. For and any look, other human being, I don't know if you saw, but right there, it took Hanma so long to get his leg on the rope because of how short his le- his limbs are. Absolutely. And I was even going to say. You know, I wonder if that limb advantage for Nakamura played into the efficacy of the rear chin lock, and he may be going back to it here. He's got the snapmare takeover. Knee, knee drop. And there's the knee. Man, but I, I was going to say, for anybody else, like a rear chin lock is just a rear chin lock, but with that limb advantage, I think everything Nakamura does that involves those limbs yep. just, just hurts just a little bit more than the other Yeah, guy. because he can stretch you out a little bit further than someone with shorter limbs. Exactly. And now the oh, and now he's is, going for a, maybe a vertical suplex or a brain buster here, but Nakamura or uh, Hanma blocking. Almost seems like a standing guillotine of sorts by Nakamura just wanting to really drive the air out of Hanma. Wow, yeah, I didn't even notice that. It looked to me like Nakamura wanted to go for some kind of a, a lift move, whether it was a suplex or a brain buster, but no, you're right. He's got a guillotine locked in here, and Hanma is out. Now, Hanma is fading. Face is purple and everything. And that, that speaks be, volumes yeah. because Hanma normally has a, an orange face. Oh, Hanma trying to rally. Hanma, Hanma trying to rally. Hanma is all about that self tanner. Oh, man. Here it is. Oh, and the deadlift. And he's drooling. Oh, my God. The effort it took from Hanma to do it, but he does it. Almost a deadlift brain buster there. It looked like he dropped Nakamura on his head. Absolutely. Shinsuke Nakamura it does start to recover, though. And you know what? Nakamura is a hero in Japan, but they're still cheering for Hanma. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's just the heart. That's just the fanfare that Hanma possesses. And now the succession of back elbows, and he slams. Oh, Scoop's slamming with the Kakeshi. He might hit this one, but no. And, and he does not. John and I, before we watched this, we were watching, there was a video of uh, Jushin Thunder Liker going around trying to pin sleeping wrestlers, wrestlers sleeping in their own rooms. Um, it was, I think it was, it was Tanahashi, Makabe, uh, I think the third one might have been Ishii, but I'm not sure, and Hanma. And, uh, the other two guys kicked out at two. Tanahashi kicked out at one, and Hanma was awake while it was happening, and he still got pinned. <laughs> There's the bulldog there by Hanma, going for the Kakashi, well, the Kakashi and, he, and he hits it! He and hit that's it. another thing, too, John was even suggesting there should be a, an example. Oh, and look, a blockbuster! There should be something else like that where Hanma tries to hit a Kakeshi headbutt on sleeping people and they would still manage to sit up in time to dodge it. Yeah, that was one of the YouTube commenters on that video. I wish I could remember their name because I laughed so hard at that. That would be amazing. But Hanma here has turned the tide with the Kakeshi. And now we'll see here. Could it be? Oh, the knee though by Nakamura. That's the limb advantage and the knee to the gut there. Oh, but Hanma. Oh, wow. That spinning heel kick in Zagiri style kick there takes Hanma clean off his feet and that gives Nakamura time to recover. The ref right now, if I if you ask me, the ref should be counting. He should be counting, but he's not. I guess because he sees both men stirring, he sees no point. But regardless, Nakamura, just when you think Hanma's going to turn it around, Nakamura with that limb advantage retakes control of the driver's seat. Yeah. And now... These two exchanging forearms here. Hanma's got so much power, but Nakamura has shown that he, he'll he hang in there. And now look at that. Oh, but Hanma, he's just getting fired up. And oh, it's just a slap. Yeah, and then Nakamura, the response. And Hanma goes to his knees, and then there's a knee oh, to the, the just side of the head. head. Oh, my God. Nakamura is so brutal. And that's what made him such a great intercontinental champion. And now Nakamura. Look at that front Baseball. falling suplex. And now, uh-oh. Oh, I think he wants a Boma Yay. Can he get it here? If he does, it might be over. Can he get Oh, oh Hanma checked it. Hanma blocked it. 
I don't want to it. Just turn Nakamura inside out. The power of Hanman. Go Hanman, I think. Rope. Go to the top rope. What are you doing? Don't go for the scoop slam. Go for the top rope. Brainbuster. Brainbuster. Now go to the top rope. No, go he's going right to the cover. Two. And the kick out there by Nakamura. I'm telling you, man. Hanman needs to start going to the top rope quicker. He's That's why he misses so often, because he takes so long to decide to do it. He needs to go to the top rope after that brain buster. Nothing else will really do the oh, job. And it looked almost like he wanted some kind of a sit-out pile driver, but Nakamura yeah. fought out of it. Could have been that fire thunder driver there by Hanma. And now Nakamura could it be, and it is, right okay. off the top rope. Yeah. But no, he can't, he can't capitalize. He's not going after the pin. Wow. Oh, man, Hanma, he's got to get back to his feet here. One of these guys has got to regain a vertical base. But, I, I mean, that needs just rocking Hanma's face, especially off the top rope. you got to figure that added momentum has got to make it even worse. And now Hanma using the He has to use the ropes to pull himself back up. And now Nakamura with the knee to the gut there. And then, oh, man. Oh, and just a kick to the back of the head. Oh, and he calls for another one. He wants another boom. Yeah, he might be able to capitalize on this one if he hits it. And I'm a duck. I'm a duck. Oh, duck man. Punches, and he checks one. Torpedo. Torpedo Kokeshi to the back. And oh, now he's no, going what? for a standard Kokeshi. There it is. He hits it. Now oh. going to the top row, maybe. No, he wants to get the scoop slam. That is so frustrating. No, I know. Fire Thunder Driver. The Fire Thunder Driver. Driver. One, two. Oh, my God. Oh. Hanma, you need to take it to the top rope. We know you can win with the top rope. Here we go. If he hits this Majan, it might be over. He might get the upset of the century. If he, he hits it, no, he does not. Oh. Does not. That's, oh, man. That's going to be the end for Hanma. Nakamura is up, and he is ready to strike. Oh, and there it is. There it is. That's and he's going to capitalize right here. One, One two. two. No! Oh, my God. Hanma kicked out. Oh, my God, and Nakamura almost looked like, I mean, he just exclaimed, what do I have to do? Hanma, I thought he was going to have it after that driver, but now, oh, look at this, inverted slam. Oh, Nakamura still in control. Those limbs are going wild. Those limbs are going wild. They want to end this definitively. Nakamura now going to, no! Oh, my what? God! Oh, my God. A flying headbutt to the head. Oh, but then, oh, a boom, a yay from Nakamura. Uh, That's got to be it. Wow. Two, two three. three count. That finish, though. Oh, my God. The knee meant the head, and the head got the victory first, but then went to the well one too many times. Oh, man, Nakamura pulling this out. I can't believe Hanma just freaking headbutted Nakamura. They clashed heads in the air. That was one of the most surreal sights I think I've ever experienced watching a wrestling match. Wow. I'll be damn Hanma does it again because I can tell you, folks, I thought he had Nakamura beat. I thought after he countered the, the Bomaye again that he was going to get the victory. But Nakamura's persistency does the damage. Wow. Chaos has had quite a night tonight. And uh, speaking of chaos, as if we didn't have enough chaos, Tomohiro Ishii is in our next match taking on Tomo, uh, uh Goto. I forget what's his first name. Uh, Hiroki? Yeah, Hiroki, yeah. Hiroki. Hiroki Goto. And Hanma, man, and it's pounding the mat. You can't take anything away. And it, Wow, he is so frustrated. Oh, man, Hanma. I feel bad for the guy, man. I really want him to get a win. Just maybe, maybe even on the last day of G1 against Takahashi. Let him have that one. Yeah, that would be nice. Just let him have it. Come on, Ghetto. Stop breaking our hearts. <sighs> I'll tell you. Hanma. Oh, and his, his next match is against Ishii, too. Oh, dear God. They just had a five-star classic back in, like, March. Oh, man. And now here it is. The main event. Hiroki Goto, the IWGP Intercontinental Champion, 
versus the Stone Pitbull, Tomohiro Ishii, a man who I believe is just right there, Ashton, right on the threshold of that main event. And if he can beat the Intercontinental Champion here, you could add Ishii's name alongside Nakamura and Anderson for guys that may be owed future Intercontinental Championship matches. Yeah. But, but Goto won't go quietly. You got you got to beat him, you know? You got to take him to the limit. And I don't think anybody is more capable of that task. And it is worth noting, the- because of the fact that Ishii lost to Okada in their match, if Ishii loses this match, he will be technically eliminated from G1, from winning his block. Now, Ishii, if I'm not mistaken, has a current standing of 4-2. and two. Is that correct? Yeah, how crazy is that? If he falls to 4-3 and three, with Okada now being 6-1, and one, Okada's worst possible record is 6-3, and three, and that's also Ishii's best possible record. Right. And if they have the same record, Okada wins by default because he won one-on-one. Absolutely. So Ishii needs to win this match in order to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, it all comes down to this. Can he beat the Intercontinental Champion? I mean, Goto beat Nakamura to win that championship, and you just saw Nakamura's impressive performance against Hanma. You know Nakamura. He's no slouch. It's going to be the Brain Buster versus the Shoten Kai. And, man, I, I can't wait for this match. I, I really believe, like I said, Ishii's the type of athlete I think can beat anybody on any given night. Started this tournament so strong, Ashton. Had an undefeated record. Was actually keeping pace with Okada at one point. But after that loss to Nakamura, and, and again, that's the other scary thing about Ishii. Thus far, the only losses he has sustained have come from his chaos stablemates. You know, the, the people... And Goto is not in chaos, so... He would be the first non-chaos member to beat Ishii if he pulls it off tonight. And I think that would be a huge deal. Because to me, it really... This is a huge match both ways. Because if Goto wins, he becomes the first non-chaos member to defeat Ishii in this tournament. If Ishii wins, he keeps his chances of winning this alive and beats the Intercontinental Champion, which might potentially mean that he is owed an IC title match. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something, man. Ooh, the odds falling on this match are huge, John. Absolutely. They don't get any higher than a matchup like this. And it really is terrifying to me that the only people capable of beating a man are those who intimately know him best, and that is the case of Ishii. But Goto doesn't care about that. Goto is looking straight ahead. He's beaten Okada. So he has that chip on his shoulder, and he will, regardless of how the rest of his record pans out. He can look in the mirror, and he can say, I was one. I was the only one thus far to give Okada a loss. Now they go to the lockup and looking here. And uh, looking at the rest of these men on, uh, on their schedule, Ishii still has Michael Elgin and Hanma to face. Goto, meanwhile, also has Elgin, but then Nagata is his second opponent. Uh, so Absolutely. really, the both of them facing Elgin, I think, is interesting. Definitely. And now look at this, the lock up here again. Both these men are probably going to keep it conservative at first. No need to bring out the big guns early. But I mean, if I'm Goto, I'm I'm thinking to myself, well, and we're unlike playing. his other two Chaos stablemates, I don't think Ishii has any mind games that he likes to play with people up against the rope. He just chops the crap out of you. Absolutely, and Goto though. <laughs> Responds wow. to the key to the gut. To that headlock, and he's going to keep it locked in here, I believe. No! Ishii shoots him off. Goto wants a hip toss. Oh, that Ishii power. blocks it. Goes for the forearm here. Ishii off the ropes. Goto takes him off his feet with a shoulder block. And then no. an elbow drop to the back. Nice elbow drop. And I'm I was surprised that Goto is actually showing some power advantage here over Ishii. That's not something you see very often. Yeah, that's a very scary thought indeed. And now goes for the rear chin lock here. I mean, it's... It's not an insult to say that Goto definitely looks to be in slightly better shape than Ishii, but Ishii just has that, almost like that dad strength, man. Like, he is just such a beast. Oh, now look at that. The, the point of the elbow. Oh, and Ishii head. up. Oh, dear God. You don't elbow me in the head and get away with it, Goto. I feel Forearm like... Forearm exchange. 
Oh, man, and I, I really got to favor Ishii here. Absolutely. Goto is flinching a lot more than Ishii as well on these hits. Ishii just looks annoyed. He does. Like, uh, yeah, 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 sure. If you must hit me in between me killing you, you, you can if you want, but I'm not going to even react to it. Oh, man, these two just back and forth, back and oh, forth. Oh, and now, I don't know if you noticed, but Ishii is starting to flinch a little bit more. And Goto yeah. seems to be getting a little bit more leverage on his strikes than Ishii. Absolutely. Maybe Goto can be the man to do that, and they're still going. Yeah, they're, neither one of them has any given. Look at this. Goto got the advantage. Goto did get the advantage. Wow. But Ishii, oh, with though, that, that chop, chop from Ishii takes that Goto all chop. the way off his feet. You know, John, it's funny because I always say whenever we have exchanges like that where two guys are just throwing the same kind of strike at each other, whoever changes it up first tends to get the victory in that little exchange. And it looked like Goto was going to actually get the victory without changing it up. But then as soon as Ishii whipped out that chop, I would definitely hand him the victory to that exchange. Absolutely. And Goto goes down again after another chop from Ishii. Ishii this man. Yeah. I think Ishii is kind of testing Goto out to see what works best against him. And I think those chops are going to be the answer. Absolutely. And now look at this. The snapmare takeover. And now holding him by there. Could it be setting up? And, no, no, and an the, elbow to the there. To forehead of his own. Yeah. That's exactly what Goto did earlier to Ishii that pissed him off so much, and now he's returning the favor. Man, oh, and Ishii with the disrespect, the foot on the head. Well, he probably feels like Goto disrespected him. I mean, don't ask me why Ishii felt disrespected. I mean, if he told me you disrespected me just for breathing. Oh, and a headbutt. Comply. And yeah, what a headbutt there by the Stone Pibble. Oh, and just a headbutt. slap. Was that a slap to the face? That looked yes. Like a, well, yeah, that was a slap, definitely. Oh, no, they're not to the face, though. They're open, open like... Open Overhand shots to the chest yeah oh but another chop from Ishii and that almost looked like it was in the throat good god the ref's even reprimanding Ishii for going for the throat I don't know if that was deliberate though honestly I'm well whether mean... it was deliberate or not I think Ishii knows how to hold back a little bit and so that he doesn't hit the throat considering that's the first time we've seen him do that in a while and Goto Maybe does just, kick out there. Just the anger overtaking Ishii and, and him getting a little bit blinded to it. Maybe that was a little accidental on purpose incident. I mean, normally in Ishii matches, I like to make a litany of jokes about, you know, why you shouldn't get Ishii mad. But if anybody can hold their own, it is Hiroki Goto, the intercom. Well, and that's the thing. Hiroki Goto has already gotten Ishii mad. And Ishii has been taking it to him ever since. But now Goto is deciding not to put up with his crap anymore. Yeah, Goto just looking at Ishii like, you really want this? You really want this? And, oh, man, Ishii. He's the Intercontinental Dang, Champion for a reason, folks. Absolutely. Now, Ishii off the ropes. Again, oh! it's down. What? Oh, wow. man. Wow. And the so, forearm from Goto takes Ishii down as well. Dare I say that Goto is making Ishii look human right now. Good God. And now Goto. Just look a at kick that to the kick. chest. But Ishii's not out of this, folks. Pushed Make no mistake. Corner. Spinning Follow through with a spinning heel kick. Now he's setting him up. Angle slam, maybe. Saito suplex. Oh, but no, but Ishii that. fights out. Ishii against the ropes. Goto follows him through. Lariat miss. Ishii. Saito! Ishii with the suplex. And now Goto uh, re retreats into the corner there. And now Ishii's got to get up here. Wow. These guys are... I didn't know that. I don't know if they have any kind of personal problems with each other, but if they don't, you would have guessed that they did. Absolutely. Now Ishii charging one of Larry in the corner. And now Goto is reeling right now. Ishii has him in a vertical suplex setup, maybe going for a brain buster. No, just sets him on the top rope. Oh, dear God. Superplex, maybe. Yeah, superplex definitely it seems to be what it's looking like. And now Goto. That's if Goto lets it happen. He's got his hand on the turnbuckle. Not anymore. Never mind. No, yeah, hey, he's definitely being carried away by Ishii here. Goto still trying oh, to... Oh, the deadlift! Oh, my God! Deadlift superplex, and even oh. with a little bit of a delay in it, too. Unbelievable. How powerful is the One, Stone Pitbull? Two, and Goto kicks Goto out. Goto stays in it, but the blood had to be rushing to the head. Goto must be all out of sorts after that. And I think I even saw Ishii kick off the rope a little bit, so... Get even a little bit of speed behind it. That was just the per that was one of the best superplexes I think I've ever seen. And he just wasn't like even on the top rope either. He did it from the middle rope. Absolutely. Oh, and Goto oh. checks the lariat. And now look at that. He goes off the ropes now. 
And, and now, he, she checks the lariat. Both these men at a stalemate Both here. of them in a lot of pain. Both of their arms are hurting right now. Oh, and the double lariat. Colliding with each other here. Ishii, though, look at Ishii. Really staggering. Loto seems to be more with it than Ishii. Absolutely. Ishii looking a little bit... Punched. Oh, and another double lariat. Oh, man. And both these now guys they're both angry, the... yeah. They're going oh. across. Another double lariat here. An wow. Both stumbling a little bit. They're both on their feet, but both staggering. Ishii strikes me as a man that can hold his sake, but he certainly can't take many more Goto lariats here. And now, oh, oh, there it is! Yes. Goto there takes is. Ishii off his feet with a lariat. I never thought I'd see the day that Goto would have that kind of a, a strength power advantage in strikes. And there's the Saito suplex. Two. Ishii kicks out. Ishii's staying in it, man. Goto Ishii's really it. taking it to Ishii here. I think this is an example where Ishii knows his game plan. He has the same game plan in every match, and Goto is just outdoing him with it. Absolutely. Now, Goto trying to go for the fireman's carry. Could be that neck breaker on the knee, but Ishii has it scouted. Oh, but Goto's still powering through. Oh, Ishii slides out, though. The headbutt. Oh. Waist lock. German by Ishii. You know, Ishii's one of those guys who he, he kind of concedes game plans. He, he admits... I don't have a game plan. My game plan is, is just to fight you and beat you up until you lose. The only thing scarier to Ishii than somebody that can out game plan him and beat him with their brains is somebody that doesn't need to, that can go into a match with the same game plan as him and he still can't manage to beat. So if Goto wins this match, not only would it be devastating because it would eliminate Ishii, it would be even more devastating because of the fact that he lost at his own game. Absolutely. Now look at this, the forearm exchanges here between these two. We go back to it the last time. Goto seemed to get the upper hand until Ishii... Oh, and the, the forearm players. there from Goto. These guys are staggering each other a little bit, but it looks to me like Ishii is a lot more angry about it than Goto. But no, Goto with the forearm and staggers Ishii twice, three times. Ishii oh, is man. really struggling, but no! The Ishii follow follows Goto into the ropes. Off the ropes. Goto follows him into the ropes. Goes from the clothesline. Misses. Ishii kicks in the gut. Shoots Goto into the ropes. Follows him through. Lariat. No. Miss. Goto. Fireman's carry. And there into it the is. Neck breaker onto the knee. Into that neck breaker. Beautiful. Wow. That exchange. They didn't even touch each other, but it was still an amazing exchange. And could the Shoten Kai be upcoming? And I like this. Dragging Ishii. He's going to go to the top rope. But he look is. at oh there. Trying to get to the top rope, but Ishii just wrapping his hands around the ankle. And now, now the other one, he doesn't want Goto to get there. Wow. That's quite a sight, though, seeing Ishii grab onto the leg of somebody. Yeah, he's usually, that's a very, to me, that's a sign of desperation. Certainly. And now Goto finally gets to the top rope, but Ishii had enough time to recover, and he gets the headbutt there. Let me tell you, Ishii knows how important this this match is both in terms of self-preservation and, and in terms of bragging rights could move is up. Is he going to go for another deadlift superplex? Well, I think Goto would have it scouted. Yeah. He might be going to the well one too many times here. Goto Goto isn't going to let him get away with it. He's punching him in the ribs. Another shot to the ribs. Ishii keeps it locked in. Well, Ishii, Goto's I thought, blocking though. I thought Ishii could maybe power through, but he does not. And now Goto oh, could it be now, the avalanche. Avalanche Yoshi Tonic, maybe? Down. I don't know. We've seen Goto hit that. Forearm, Goto with the forearm. Forearm exchange on the middle rope here. Absolutely. These guys will fight anywhere. And now Ishii seems to have control. He does. Oh, oh but the headbutt from Goto. And now he's That's in perfect position. Yeah, I think you're right, John. I think we might get the Avalanche Yoshi Tonic here. And if he gets it, that would be quite an advantage here. But oh, Ishii, Ishii might be recovering. Maybe not. No, uh, no. Uh, Goto! And he got it! He did get it, but he couldn't follow up with the pin immediately. He has to crawl over to catch Ishii. One, two! Ishii kicks out. He stays in it, man. Ishii stays in it. But I think Goto just signaled for the end. Could it be the Shoten Kai here? No! Still going for... I think he was thinking some type of suplex. Ishii with the back elbows. Oh, the headbutt! Oh, the headbutt! Good God! Ishii is an absolute monster. Oh, and he just spit, too. I really hope there weren't any teeth in that. Absolutely. I mean, Ishii, his motto is, you got to kill me to beat me. 
And I'll tell you something, Goto, despite an avalanche Yoshi tonic, a move that not only would drive the air out of most men, but it would beat most men, and Ishii stays in it. The toughness of Ishii, man. Pitbull is baring his teeth in full tonight. And now what's he going to do here? As you see Toriano and Ghetto, his stablemates, his comrades watching on. There's a oh, and he went for a lariat, but Goto barely even moved, and now he's just plain angry. Another lariat attempt from Ishii. Goto off the ropes. A lariat from Goto. Both men standing tall here. Ishii very, very clearly staggered, though. Seems like Goto is getting the better of Ishii yet again in these strike exchanges. Now Ishii hits Goto. Goto screaming again, Goto. Another lariat from Goto. Staggers Ishii. These guys are on their last legs, you can tell. It's like they've got sea legs or newborn giraffe legs. Absolutely, and Ishii needed to go to the corner for support. But then, oh, oh, charges a Goto. A huge lariat from Ishii there. Goto staggered back into the corner himself, but he's on his feet still. Oh, and another lariat takes Ishii down to his knees. Wow. I think that this match has proven to me that Goto might just be a better striker than Ishii, which I did not think I would say about anyone in this tournament. Oh, oh that lariat! Ishii! One! Oh, God, don't kick down at one! Wow. And Ishii, just exhausted. He's spent, but he has to keep going because this match isn't over yet. How exhausted must Goto be even though he just kicked out at one? Well, I mean, those strikes, every single one of them that hits you, you've just got to feel so worn down, but here comes the seated lariat. The lariat. lariat. The lariat. He missed, though. Goto out of the way. Goto. Oh, oh he he's caught him. him in a fireman's carry. And he oh, drove him down. Oh, his own knee, taking a move out of Goto's arsenal. Wow. The referee telling Ishii to go cover Goto and he'll count, but he's not ready to. Go over the low angle lariat. He hits it. Ishii into the cover. One, two. Oh, and Goto kicks out. Goto staying in and Look at Ishii pounding the mat. Ishii wants to win here. He's going to have to hit the brain buster. It's going to have to be that that stone pit bull brain buster to do the damage. I mean, like you said, as in the low angle lariat, not enough. He just called for it. Goto better have a counter, or this could be over here. He's got him up. Got him up. No. Lights out. The headbutt to the back from Goto. And now, oh, he went for another headbutt, but Ishii checked it with the forearm. Forearms. Oh, the lariat from Goto takes Ishii off his feet. Discus variation makes its mark. Can Goto capitalize here? Someone needs to capitalize on something because these guys are killing each other. Absolutely. Goto, maybe moments away from making Ishii move further down. Hell, mathematically eliminating Ishii. Could Goto here, if he gets this win. Man, Ishii, I think, still beating himself up that the low angle lariat wasn't enough. But he has got to do more if he hopes to beat the Intercontinental Champion. I mean, this is the same guy that beat Okada, gave Okada his only loss thus far in the tournament. Ishii's got to dig deep down inside. Oh, Goto's going for a lariat in the corner, and he gets it. And wow, what Picks force Ishii behind up it. off his feet with that lariat even. Oh, he has him up into the corner here. What might Goto want from this? Is he going to go for a? Is he going to go for a top rope vertical suplex here? Fireman's oh, carry. Oh God, what is he doing here? Oh, my God, the power. Whatever he wants to do, he's about to do it. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. The, the neck breaker under the knee. Ishii has been having neck troubles all tournament long, it seems. And now he goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, and Ishii kicks out of that, too. Matt Ashton, for my money, I don't know if you'll agree with this, but if I'm go to, I would have gone for the Shoten Kai right after that. I think Ishii was so vulnerable for that move, but now you've given him those few seconds to recover, which is all a pro like Ishii needs. But now Goto, I have called for it uh, prematurely so many times in the course of this match, but I think now he knows no other recourse, and that's Shoten Kai, you would it think. It comes down, John, you've been saying it all, all tournament when it happens. Each man has one card left. Goto, Goto has this sheer... Oh, he, he went for it. Ishii has the Brain Buster. Goto has the Shoten Kai. Oh, what a lariat from Goto. But he goes right into the cover. Oh, and Ishii kicked out at one. Wow, my God. My God. The fight in both of these men. Goto and now is Goto. ready to end this. He's got him ready. Oh, but the headbutt from Ishii. 
Oh, the, the headbutt head from so, Gojo. The headbutt from Gojo. The headbutt. Gojo's oh, still on his feet, though. You know he wants to put this away with a Shoten Kai. He's, he's got gonna, him hooked in. He's he needs to get it. the arm over. He got the arm over. He's he needs to get him it. up. He's got him up. He Shoten got Kai, he got it. That's going to be it's the end. One, one, two, two, three. three. Count. What a match. Holy crap. And Tomohiro Ishii is now mathematically unable to win the B block. Did you ever think you would say that? I oh, didn't think I would crap. say it this early. I thought it might happen on the last night, but I didn't think it would be this early. Goto continues to impress. Chaos was so close to reigning. You had Okada win his match. Toriano win his tag match. Chaos was having a great night. It all fell on the shoulders of Tomohiro Ishii. And believe me, those are some strong shoulders for those circumstances to fall on. But Goto's will proved to be even stronger on this night on day 14 of the G1 Climax. Wow. What a freaking match. That was one of my favorite shows of this tournament so far. How, I didn't, didn't we say that yesterday, too? I think they're just getting better as we go. Yeah, and it's quite apropos that they're getting better at this point because we are so close to determining the winner for each block. Who because of win? Okada now, because of Okada being 6-1 and one and that one single loss being to Hiroki Goto, Tomohiro Ishii and Michael Elgin have both now been mathematically eliminated from the possibility of winning the B block. And it is now a four-man race in the B block. It's a five-man race in the A block, a four-man race in the B block, and the men that control their own destinies are Naito and Okada. And man, what circumstances they find themselves in. Absolutely unbelievable. But here's the thing, Ashton, if Okada was to lose even one other matchup and Goto was really able to catch up and keep on this roll, Goto could still win the block, correct? Because yes. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's a four-man race. It's Goto, Nakamura, Anderson, and Okada in the B block. Right. But here's the thing. Even though Goto has already beaten Okada, Carl Anderson is, I think, the least likely of the four because Nakamura has already beaten Goto, and he is the only man left out of these guys that still has Okada on his schedule. So Nakamura could be the one to hand Okada his second loss, and that would cause, because Nakamura has also beaten Goto, Nakamura would then win the block. Absolutely, and then Nakamura would only have to face the winner of the other block. And but, then he could be looking. but, I'm going to say this too, we might have an interesting situation. Because if Okada, Goto, Nakamura, and Anderson all find a way to end at 7-2, and two, we would have another triangle situation. Because Nakamura beat Okada, Okada beat Anderson, Anderson beat Nakamura. Well, Anderson beat, yeah, Anderson beat Nakamura, and he beat Goto, so... And he beat Goto, yeah. Well, I think Goto lost to both Nakamura and Anderson, but he lost to Okada, or, but he beat Okada. Yeah. Oh, I really hope this gets ironed out by the end of the tournament, because we might end up having a very, very convoluted finals otherwise. Absolutely. I mean, just and that's just... Sit back and enjoy, but for now, we get a day off, and then Tuesday, when we come back, our matches are going to be Tetsuya Naito versus Doc Gallows, Shibata versus Tenzan, Ibushi versus Yano, Styles versus Fale, and Tanahashi versus Makabe. That card looks stacked, especially Naito and AJ Styles matches for me. Those matches have the most intrigue. Guys, the G1 Climax Tournament rolls on. Goto reigns supreme tonight. The Intercontinental Champion still going strong. Two mathematical eliminations. The unbreakable Mike Welgan, the stone pitbull Tomohiro Ishii. Man, this tournament's just getting crazier and crazier by the day. We will see you Tuesday for Day 15. Partner, what a show tonight. Absolutely. We'll see you guys for our Monday Night Raw Twit Wow tomorrow night. And then G1 Day 15 on Tuesday.